November 27, 1929. The Border Cities Star, Windsor, Ontario, Canada. The Red Dwarf by H. L. McPherson, Editorial Staff, The Border Cities Star. Cadillac Square, Detroit, perpetuates the name of M. Lamoth Cadillac, founder of America's fourth city, but to the greater part of the United States and Canada, strangely enough, the name has little significance. The Cadillac automobile, it is true, has carried the name into many lands, but few persons associate it with that of the father of Detroit. That Cadillac should be so great a stranger to fame outside of the city he founded, however, is not so tragic a circumstance as the fact that he lost his holdings in Detroit through the intrigues of his enemies. The misfortune that was Cadillac's, according to an old story of his career, centered entirely on a red dwarf who was in early days the banshee of the city of the Straits. How the French noble came to offend that mythical, malignant creature, however, involves another story that has its setting in Old Quebec. On March 10, 1701, just after Cadillac had returned to the New World from France with authority to locate a colony and build a fort anywhere on Le Détroit he should see fit, he was given a banquet in the old castle of St. Louis, Quebec. While the banquet was in progress and mirth and merriment ran high, an aged crone, who called herself a sorceress, asked permission to enter. Seeing some new diversion in prospect, her request was granted by Cadillac's hosts. From one to the other of the guests, she proceeded, peering into palms, while the black cat perched on her shoulder dozed contentedly. The cat, it is claimed, woke up and licked her ear whenever her inspiration seemed to run out and, it was believed, once again, re-established communication between her and the devil. Finally, the sorceress reached the place where Cadillac was seated. Taking a brazen basin, she poured a clear, heavy liquid into it and then lifted his palm. Sieur, she said, yours is a strange destiny, a dangerous journey you will soon undertake. You will found a great city which one day will have more inhabitants than New France now possesses. Many children will nestle around your fireside. Here she paused, and Cadillac bade her continue. Mon Chevalier, she went on, I wish you had not commanded me to go on, for dark clouds are arising and I see dimly your star. The policy you intend pursuing in selling liquor to the savages, contrary to the advice of the Jesuits, will cause you much trouble and be the cause of your ruin. In years to come, your colony will be the scene of strife and bloodshed. The Indians will be treacherous. The hated English will struggle for its possession, but under a new flag it will reach a height of prosperity which you never in your wildest dreams pictured. You will bask in a sunnier climate, but France will claim your last sigh. Shall my children inherit my possessions? Cadillac asked. Your future and theirs lie in your own hands, he was told. Beware of undue ambition. It will mar all your plans. Appease the Red Dwarf. Beware of offending him. Should you be thus unfortunate, not a vestige of your fortune will be given to your heirs. Your name will scarcely be known in the city you founded. Cadillac did not take her word seriously and, on the following day, set out for Detroit, or what was to be Detroit. On July 24, 1701, he landed at a little cove at the foot of the present Griswold Street. The next day, he selected a site for the fort. For years, according to the legend, all went well. The colony prospered, and the value of Cadillac's holdings increased. The Red Dwarf was forgotten if, indeed, it had ever been recalled by the Monsieur de Tetois. May 1707 came around, and the little community indulged in a Maypole celebration. Toward the evening, Cadillac and his wife drew away from the revelers and walked along the hill overlooking the river. As they moved away from the settlement, the woman overheard a habitant mentioning the name Na Rouge, Red Dwarf. Madame Cadillac had heard of the Quebec prophecy and, according to the legend, urged her husband to return home. Beware the Red Dwarf was what the prophetess told you, she warned, when he should come misfortune was nigh. Bah, gurgled Cadillac. They returned homeward along the shore, and suddenly, the misshapen figure of a grinning dwarf, very red of face, crossed their path. A cold gleam came from his eye, and his open mouth displayed sharp, 
pointed teeth. It's the red dwarf, whispered the terrified Madame Cadillac. Cadillac flared up. Taking a tight grip on his cane, he dealt the dwarf a sharp blow over the head. Get out of my way, you red imp, he snarled. The red imp got out of his way. In fact, he is supposed to have vanished, laughing fiendishly as he did. Madame Cadillac was on the verge of hysterics, or whatever it was women got in those days. Cadillac treated the matter lightly, but when he had occasion to visit Quebec a short time later, he was faced by his first ill fortune. He was arrested on a charge trumped up by his enemies and was forced to sell his Detroit holdings to pay for his trial. Later, he was transferred to Louisiana as governor, but he died in France. His children did not inherit one acre of his vast estates. During the next hundred years, Detroit was the scene of internal strife, of massacre, of war. Its flag changed five times. <laughs>